adding new days to the Jewish calendar. What, what is, what, why, why are you excited about that? Obviously, for obvious reasons, we've, uh, we just celebrated Yom HaTzmot yesterday. We had two days of commemoration the past week. We had Yom HaZikaron, the Shoav Lagvura, and we had Yom HaZikaron, the Chalei Tzahal. And um, we're going to have Bezat Hashem, Yom Yerushalayim. And just to make sure that you understand that this idea of adding new days to the Jewish calendar doesn't, it's, only, it's not only for the Zionists, it's also adding Lagba Omer, right? Lagba Omer is also an additional day that was added recently to the Jewish calendar, maybe uh, before our times, but uh, it still is considered to be very, very uh, recent Chag, which is also questionable whether or not it should be celebrated. Um, if, if, if a Martian would come down, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not talking about the Meron tragedy right now, but if a Martian would come down and explore uh, this world and try to write some kind of paper about Judaism, he might come to the conclusion that the most important Jewish holiday is Lagba Omer. Why? Because it's the only holiday that brings uh, 300,000 people together to one place. And he also might conclude uh, that Har Meron is a holy place for the Jewish people, <laughs> right? Um, I'm, I'm, right? And 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 I, I want to tell you again. I'm not, I'm trying not to go into the Meron tragedy right now. I don't want to use this for my discussion right now. But people were people were referring to going out there uh, as Misurit Nefesh. They were using those expressions, Misurit Nefesh. We're not going to stop going to Har Meron. Um, I don't know if, if 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 you notice how much you go to burial sites and Kibrit Tzedekim has become an essential part of Judaism in the 21st century. I'm not sure that Martian would be so off if he would conclude that uh, one of the one of the most important mitzvot for Jews is to go up to this mountain and light a bonfire. Something that it's not Doraita last time I checked. It's not Derabana. It's not even a minna and barely a minna that has any basis for it. And yet, and yet, every child that you ask today will tell you that Lagba Omer is it. When you go to shuls, right, when they have on their glass stained windows all the Chagim, right, you will see, so in the Tzioinish shul, you'll see like a little flag of Israel, Kohodesh ear. But for many shuls, you'll see like a, a, a Chetz Vakeshet, you'll see a bow and arrow, you'll see a, right, Lagba Omer has become part of the Jewish calendar. And it's also, relatively speaking, a new holiday added to the Jewish calendar. So therefore, the month of Yar, the month of Yar, I think what uh, a symbol, well, the symbol of Chodesh Yar has become adding new days to the Jewish calendar. And I want to discuss this question. Is it possible? Why do we do it? But more important, I want to ask, what is the religious meaning of adding these days? Is maybe one, maybe you could argue with me. Listen, don't go too uh, deep into this. You know, America has 4th of July. Then even Thanksgiving in America is not a real religious per se at holiday. You don't have to be religious to celebrate Thanksgiving. The Haraya, Haraya, that Russell of Ancient and many other rabbis in America thought it was fine for the Jews to. to to uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, if Rafflevich would have thought that it's, it's, it's a Christian theme to it, he probably would have said it's also. So, okay, there are other days in this. In, 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 you know, um, I was joking with my friends. I said, the 4th of July in America, it's to understand the Palestinians, Yom Asmod, I said, it's like the 4th of July in England, right? How do the English celebrate 4th of July? They're an Akba day, right? So, so you know, every 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 country <laughs> has their every country has their their days of celebration that is unique to that nation to that people. Let's not maybe look into it too deep. That's one possibility which I'm not going to accept right now. But you you could make that argument. It's a secular holiday and not in a negative way. A secular holiday, one could argue. I, however, would like to take a different approach as hopefully you'll soon see. But let's ask, first of all, a very basic question. What is the problem to add new holidays to the Jewish calendar? 
What would be the problem? By the way, I have two different store sheets. Oh, right. And one, one was supposed to be for one shoe and one for another shoe. I'm not sure which I'm using yet. <laughs> but, but it's good that we have both of them in front of us. Can anyone suggest, please, what would be the problem to add new holidays? Yes. That's the Easter about Tosif, right? Which, uh, which I guess I'm joking. I said outside, you know, eating, eating uh, rogelach now is also about Tosif. <laughs> um, <laughs> Especially after Yom HaTzmaut, gosh, I think we should all we should all have a diet for a week after Yom HaTzmaut. Um, okay, anyway, that's why they had Bahab and probably after Chagin. Um, but there is an Easter Baal Tosif. Not only is it an Easter in the Torah to add to the Torah, the example, par excellence example, that the Ramban brings for the Easter Baal Tosif is adding new holidays. So uh, if, if you look in uh, on your, uh, I hope I brought this right. Did I bring this? I think I did. One second. Oh, yeah, because I took the same one twice. I'm sorry. Oh, there's only one sheet out there? Second one. Ah, okay. I gave another, I, I sent another source sheet, which is fine. Okay, we'll do that next time. That's fine. That's fine. And the source sheet for next week, there's a, that I'll mention, is the Ramban. There's a Ramban on the Torah of Alto. See, from the Ramban, you know, I'm sorry. The Ramban tells us that uh, the example for adding a new law to the Torah is for us to decide that the new Chag, who did that? Yerovam. Yerovam ben Nevat. He added another day to, and, and that's in Sir Tosi. So we would have to get around this Ramban a little bit, right, or discuss the Ramban. You know what? We'll do that with Hashem next time we meet and talk about that halachic uh, uh, discussion about Baal Tosi, what does it include? Does that include how the modern post team somehow deal with this Ramban? There are issues which hopefully we'll talk about next time. However, when we talk specifically about the days that were added, there were specific issues to do with each and every of specific days. And I'll explain. Let's start uh, in the chronological order with Yom HaZikaron Lashu'ah V'Lagvurah. <laughs> there has been uh, um, a very heavy opposition in the rabbinical world to the making of Yom HaShoah as a day of memorial. From Rav Soloveitchik to Rav Moshe Feinstein and the Chazon Ish, all not just, uh, um, you know, viewed their, not that they, they, they um, had an opinion, they had a very strong opinion against making a day called Yom HaShoah. Why? Why were they so uh, upset? So I'm saying, we, let's put Baal Tosif on the side right now, and let's talk right now about what, let's talk about what is it that that was so difficult to make this Yom HaShoah become a Yom HaShoah? In addition to it being Nisan? So one problem was Nisan. People didn't like this idea, Chodesh Nisan, Chodesh we don't say Tachanun, it shouldn't be a day that we commemorate the Holocaust. Um, yes, please. Tisha B'Av was viewed as the... For many people, Nachon, people very, very many people view Tisha B'Av as the day that is uh, the day that we commemorate all Jewish tragedies. Um, and, and the argument was, by the way, a very classic, you know, a, a kind of a very Shamrani, very conservative opinion, which is, listen, for the Chamanitsky massacres, there was nothing special. For the Crusades, there were nothing special. We need to uh, make up something new. And what is fascinating is, is that this was such a strong opinion that I find, and please, I know I'm being recorded, but be careful. I just find that when so many people give up so many different reasons why, they're, why they don't want to do something, it just portrays and reflects that, that they, they, they don't like it. They don't like it. Their gut feeling is against it, and now they're they're throwing everything at it. Uh, let's go through a few of the of the sources that they've got this. Um, let's start with Rav Moshe Feinstein. Rav Moshe Feinstein. It's printed actually in the Gurt Moshe. He said, um, right, six million people. I dare Hitler Right, yeah, if you ever read Moshe Feinstein, you know that he loves to put eyes and owls in every word. 
elevator, it comes like with seven ayins and five olives, <laughs> right? So even Hitler, Yomach Shemot, gets an ayin in his name. Shemar Uri Arena Yatso, Yom is a Kabul Tanit with Spila, Shitama Ma'alat Kvodo, Al Shadang Lona Sakhu. Right? You were Russian responding to people who say to him, Why isn't that we haven't made up a day uh, to commemorate the Holocaust? Now, before we continue, I want to tell you, I, I grew up in Israel. I don't know if people, I, I, I assume most people do not grow up in Israel, correct? I grew up in Israel. I, I was born here. And when I was a kid, we didn't have Yom HaShoah on Kavzai Ben Nisan. It was Asrabi Tebet. But it was Mamash Yom HaShoah. Meaning, it, 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 when I was a kid, if you would ask me, when's Yom HaShoah? I would have told you, it's, it's Asrabi Tebet. In our school, we had the, we had the, um, people come to talk to us, survivors, talk to us about the Shoah. Our classes were all dedicated. We had exhibitions and posters about the Shoah. It was completely on the Shoah. And Kavzayin bin Nisan, if I, I, was really not, not a big day in Israel, by the way, 30 years ago. It was 40 years ago. I don't remember it being such a big thing. You also had Yom, Yom Kaddish Klawi. That's what I'm saying, right? Asrabi Tebet became the Yom HaShoah for the firm community. Why is that? Because after the war, after people came to the Rabbi Rashid and asked a Sheila when to say Kaddish, the Rabbi Rashid family of Israel decided to turn Asrabi Tebet into the day of Kaddish for all those who don't know when or where their, their relatives died. And it became the Yom HaKadosh HaKali. And the religious community turned that into some Yom HaShoah in all our schools. That that became Yom HaShoah. And our yes. It's interesting. It's uh, the International Holocaust Day is on a different day. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, that's, that's also new. That's also pretty new, right? So I'm just saying that when we grew up, this became Yom, Yom HaShoah and and uh, became Asrabi Tevet. And it's and at some point, it's at some point when Kavdisan became Yom HaShoah for Israel, it was almost at some point that there were two days for the firm and the and the secular. There were two days to commemorate Yom HaShoah. Mamash, in the, today, today, it's changed. You know, I, I, I have this book in my mind. I want to write one day. It's called Things That Changed in My Lifetime. I have a whole long list. But 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 one of them is, is uh, when I was a kid, I said, Ashtabit Tibet was a big thing. Yom HaShoah was not big. Then later on, it became kind of for both. And today, Ashtabit Tibet, you ask kids today, Israeli kids, religious kids about Ashtabit Tibet, they won't know, they won't associate with Yom HaShoah anymore. People, um, some shuls, they still say, um, um, like, you know, um, uh, 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 on, on, on Yom HaShoah Tebet. We're living in a time where there are not many survivors that are saying Kaddish anymore for their relatives. And it's not, and Yom HaShoah became much, much, much more powerful. Uh, it's interesting. By the way, it is but very, it is I'm sorry? I think birthdays. Yeah, uh, as, as hardly felt in our community anymore. I feel. I feel. Celebrate always a fast. Yes, time. but not a it's a so fast, but it's not. I'm saying it's not necessarily associated with the Yom HaShoah. I mean, I also live in Gushni, my community is very much. Okay, the further we move away from the Shoah, the more we need to I agree. I'm, I'm just asking the factor what's happened. I'm not. I'm not questioning right or wrong. I'm just saying there is a certain dynamics and energy. Of how things develop, and I think, by the way, that it's very normal. And um, I don't think Purim and Hanukkah were celebrated the first year after Purim and Hanukkah the way we celebrate them today. Things have a dynamic. By the way, for that matter, every, every Jewish holiday has its dynamics. Pesach, including and Shavuot, um, right? That's not a time to talk about this right now. But we're still trying to figure it out. We're still trying to figure it out what the minhagim will be and what we're going to do about these days. But right now, that's where we are. I think. Uh, Yom HaShoah is a very powerful day. Why was Ramosha against it? He look at the second line. He said, talking about the Crusades, וגם בארץ ישראל הרגו שם הרבה יהודים, משום דאין לקבוע עוד יום לתענית ולבכי. There's a kina, I'm sorry, I'll try, yeah. Um, the Rav here, uh, Rav Moshe Fashion here talks about how um, the reason that they did not make a day for תענית 
for the Crusades is because in one of the lamentations, one of the keynote that we say on Tisha B'Av, it says explicitly that we shall not add new days of, uh, of crying, of mourning, because Tisha B'Av includes them all. Now, by the way, this idea is also mentioned by Ramosha Panshin's cousin, who was that? His cousin, Russell Vajic, right? They, they both uh, agree uh, about this. Um, and Rav Slavich really developed it even more. He quotes his kina, he talks about it. Listen, I, 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 I don't you know these are two great, uh, the greatest rabbis of the 20th century, but I just find it uh, very peculiar that, you know, we, the, the, we're, we're making up a halacha from a kina, from a lamentation. I mean, uh, with all due respect, it's a, it's a kina, it's a poem, right? I, it, it's true that Rabbi Slavich um, on Tisha B'Av, learned the Kinot as he learned the Rambam. I mean, he would learn every word, and he, and he felt that these were written by, some of them were written by really great people, but uh, still, I mean, I, um, I I think it comes from a very, very deep place, like I said before, of being conservative, of being shamran, of saying, you, we can't add anything, we can't do, who are we to do anything, right? Um, I, that's where I think it comes from, personally, but let's go on. A little, let's continue a little bit. Didn't they add? Didn't they add the uh, Avraham? That's right. Oh, Avarachim. they added. Oh, yeah, friend, they did add. They added Avraham in in our davening that we say that we still say today. Avraham, the prayer that we say on Musaf, was written after the Crusades, and that's why, if you notice, consider even Shabbat Mivarchim, Chodesh Iyar, Chodesh Sivan, we still say Avraham. We always argue about it, but that, the minute gets to argue a little bit about it, and then we say why. Because the Crusades occurred during Chodesh Iyar and Chodesh Sivan, and that's why we say, and that's by the way why Ashkenazim takes Sfirat Omer morning much more serious than Sfardim do. Sfardim, as the years went by from the Kiva students, were more and more lenient, which which is normal. When you you know uh, how many people here mourn the expulsion of Spain, mm. right? We don't. Uh, yeah, okay, but you know, we, we, we don't really think about it too much. It doesn't really affect us that much. We, Tish, we mentioned Tishabah, no, right? It was on Tishabah. Uh, it wasn't Tishabah, that's true. It was, it was on Tishabah. But, but um, I'm saying as, as it's normal. It's normal that as time goes by, we, uh, it's, things less affect us, right? I mean, can we compare uh, uh, what will happen, please God, in 500 years from now, how people will come with the, uh, the, the Holocaust? As 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 our as your generation, as my generation, I'm sure we can't compare it, and it's normal. You can't blame people. I mean, it's something about time goes by. So, but but the Ashkenazi communities, once the Crusades hit the same date of the morning of Shirat Omer, the laws of mourning, M O U R, right? The morning of of of, of, of Rabbi Kiva students. Once that once the the Crusades, uh, um, the the morning for the Crusades victims. Somehow connected to the morning of Rabbi Kiva students, the Ashkenazi communities even added more halachot of mourning, while the Sephardic communities were more lenient about it. Um, Rav, Rav Kook has a beautiful poem. Rav Kook has a poem which he which he describes that in Chodesh Iyar, the blood as if of Rabbi Kiva students was mixed with the blood of the Jews of the Crusades. He had this whole thing about this, and uh, that's why we mourn it. So um, that's what I. This is what I sent, but let's continue reading it. Look at the second paragraph. The law dami, it's not similar to the Xerod, the decree of Tachvitat, that's 1666. Uh, sorry, 1648. 1648. 1666 was chapter 1648 was the Khamenevsky massacres. Um, the head of the Cossacks, Shinyagubi Ukraina, Ukraine, and Poland. Wait a second. Says, says Rabbi Moshe, I have to be, I have to be honest. There actually was a day that was made for Chemenski massacre. Kaf Sivan. Kaf Sivan. If you look in your, if you look in your, your certain books like uh, the Mishabura mentioned that uh, Kaf Sivan is a day of uh, fasting for the Chemenski massacre. We don't do that today, which is another proof to see how dynamics. It doesn't make a difference what people decide. It's what we do. I'll talk about a lot about that. But Kaf Sivan. So, so Rav Moshe says, you see, 
There, there is such a thing. He says, "Mishum shelo aitazo gzera klalit kegzerat hagut vachuban elarad miudina acheret." First of all, he says, "This wasn't. Didn't this not? This did not affect the entire Jewish community. It just the the community of Ukraine and Poland. So that's why they made it for that community. But to make up a day for the whole Jewish community, now we don't do so quickly." She says, Tach Vitat is not, is not a decree that was a response or continuation of the Hubran Beit HaMikdash. It was the Cossacks who were rebelling against the aristocrats, the, 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 you know, the, the, the heads of the state at the time in Ukraine. I'll translate in a second. He tries to explain for so many different reasons, which I are reasons. They are reasons. I mean, they are explanations. I don't understand why these explanations um, justify what he's saying. Meaning, you, whenever, whenever you want to try to uh, talk about something, you can always say, well, they're different. Many things are different. The question is, is what is different or reason for what you're trying to say? He's trying to explain that it was a very local problem. He had nothing with the Khurban and the Galut. Aval, look in the fourth line on the bottom. Zerot, the Hitler. Are you all Klal Yisrael? This was much greater than the entire Jewish community. And he was killing Jews all over the world. He, he was about to conquer the whole world. Because once we attach it because of this reason to the Khurban, it, it goes back to the Khurban Bit and the Gizrat Galut. Then we have the Kina that we just said that tells us you don't make new lamentations. Uh, and do days of, of commemoration for Xerot of Khurban. Look, I, I, it's counterintuitive, where he would say it's if you have a local catastrophe, fine, you can make a local timeless or right. recognition. But, not, but if you have something that affects the entire Jewish people, no, yeah, you, yeah. Do, you don't do that. It's like, Wait a minute, that seems counterintuitive, almost. Uh, look, he didn't say no, so it was taken care of by the king. Right, right. It means, he does, it means, he does. But, but, meaning but, it's important to remember there were Slavetschik and Moshe Feinstein, they all believe that Tishba is the right day to, 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 be, to mourn the Khurban of the Shoah. And what, what, what's interesting, though, is, and we'll still get to it, however, Slavetschik was against writing new kinot. Rosh did not believe in writing new lamentations, even for the Holocaust, which is really interesting because in the book that came out of the OU, put out a book of Kinot of Rosh book, right? If not mistaken, the back they added uh, they added Kinot for the Shoah, which the Rav himself was against. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. I, 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 I want, it. yes, Rosh the, the fact that they made what do you call it, the Yom Tzom or, or Tani, yeah. morning or Tani's, whatever it is, uh, locally, it's learned from the Rambam, but in the opposite way. The Rambam says if you have a nest, a local nest, you're supposed to. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, hopefully, hopefully, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, I, I, I just want to. Yeah, okay, but, but they did add, they did add a special tiny, but they added two notes for the for the crusade. They did. They did. So if you add two you notes know, for the crusade, you want to add two you notes know, for the Shoah. Uh, well, I, I, Rav Soloveitchik said that the two notes that were written. In the past, were written by by people that were almost Rishonim, like like Rishonim, and they it wasn't just poets, but rather like great great people. Who are we to write such a thing? That's what he said. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll read it. May I make an observation? Our entire religion and observances are made up by we have to remember. We have to remember things in Egypt. We have to remember this. We have right, to remember right. that. And in each occasion where we're supposed to remember, something has been written down somewhere. Right. Now we come to the, the biggest terrible thing in our entire history. And in fact, at to that point, the whole world is the biggest 
right? We have to remember. I agree now, with you. Right. So how do we I agree with you? But let, let's get to that. Let's let him try to uh, tries to respond to you. I but I'm with you. I, I'm on your side. Well, thank okay. You for that. Okay. Um, I, I I want to I want to convey the 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 uh, continue what you're saying. Just uh, I'll stop in the middle here. There's a wonderful book that I really really love very much. By it was written by a, a person called Rabbi Dr. Shimon Federbush. Um, he was a at some point of his life he was the chief rabbi of Finland. I don't think that's his big yichus, but um, he had he was a big time chacham and he was one of the first people to compose a a book about the state of Israel and Jewish law, something I'm very much a, uh, one of my hobbies. And and um, in, in his chapter about the renewal of Sanhedrin, about whether or not we can somehow start in Sanhedrin, he talks, he brings all the sources, and then he and then he and then he says the following. He says um, he gives a little bit of a, a, a he gives a little bit of a of a musar to uh, to our generation. He says, um, I don't think we're that close to opening a new Sanhedrin. He says, in our generation, rabbis are so scared to make oh. any kind of new decisions. And in fact, he says, he says, our own rabbinate, our own have don't have the don't even have the courage to get up and declare a, a day of fasting, something so simple for that <laughs> that we do today, that we still keep today, what happened in those days is nothing comparable to what happened to the Shoah. The Shoah Litsarenu. You know, there's a there's um there's a very powerful sentence that I uh, uh, that's in the Daish Kodesh's book from of common Ptolemis Shapira, the Pichies the Rebbe, who was murdered by the Nazis in World in the Shoah in the in the Warsaw ghetto. He wrote a, he wrote a, he used to give drushes to his community in Warsaw, and they collected them. And he he, uh, he wrapped them in some kind of wrapping and hid them, and they were found in the rubble of the Warsaw ghetto. In it, it says if if when you if if anyone finds this book and there's still Jews in the world, please send it to my brother in Tel Aviv, the uh, Admora Chalutz. If you heard about him, Admora Chalutz, he was a he was a Admora Rebbe, was also a pioneer, was a Zionist guy, and uh, it, some. Russian soldier gave it to a some America. It got to an American, to American chaplain. It was printed, H. Kodesh, and in it, in 1942, I think, he he gives a he gives a drasha and he and he writes, he's a, we're living in terrible times, terrible times. But he said, you know, we've had such terrible times in the past in the Chuban. Then 1943, a year later, he comes back to that that Shabbat, that parsha, and he adds in the footnote. It says, a year later, I can testify that I was wrong. That in Jewish history, there is nothing that comes close to what we've been going through. Not the Churban, not the Crusades, not the Inquisitions. Not, we are living in 1943, he's saying, this is the worst tragedy to fall on the Jewish people in all history. And my Fede Bush is saying, you know, how can it be that, we, that the rabbis don't have uh, the, the, the courage here to, to make a day. This is a long time ago, he's right. right I mean, you know, you can perkin, you can perkin, we still stand out. Right? You know the famous joke about you can perkin? Famous joke about the, the, the Christians and Muslims and the Jews have a conference for peace, for world peace, and they decide every religion has to give up one, one principle. For world peace. So the Muslims come along and say, for world peace, we're willing to give up uh, believing in Muhammad. And the Christians say, for world peace, we're willing to give up uh, saying that Jesus was our, was our savior. And the Jews say, we need another week. And they take another week and they come back and they say, after great deliberations, we decided to give up the second Yukum Perkin on Musa for world peace. <laughs> right? Now, now you know, Yukum Perkin 
that we say in Musaf till today has no relevance in our generation. It's in a language that we don't speak. It's about a situation that we, doesn't exist. It's a, and yet, you know, it was a big fight between the reform and the things. Well, well, but, but whatever reason, right? It's still so. So that's okay to say, but uh, but you know, to add that to your prayers. I mean, that's like who are you to add that? I mean, just there's something. There's something I, I understand where it's coming from. There's a fear, and it's a real fear to add to change. We thought what the reform movement did to Judaism. I I, I understand the slope. We can talk about that for hours, right? And we understand that, but still, at some point, there's a little bit of a obscure that's going on here. And he said he he wa- he expected that every Shabbat we should say a tefillah. If for the crusade we say avarachem, uh, 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 every Shabbat we say avarachem. I'm sure your shul say every Shabbat avarachem, right? Every Shabbat for the crusade. You don't think we should say something every Shabbat in davening for the Holocaust? I mean, you know, as a prayer. That we say every single day, multiple times a day, wasn't established. It was in the Middle Ages related. I can't remember exactly. It was in a town, but somehow the minute that even though Elaine obviously is an old old tila from the, from days or whatever, but the establishment of Elaine as a prayer, it it happened as a yeah. uh, back then. It was yeah. and then up until whatever century twelve. I heard that Elaine Shabbat was. Is associated always with Jewish customs that look a little bit weird. So we 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 at the end of Brit Mila and after Shlavana, where where people might say these guys are like uh, with the judo stuff going on here. So we say Kishbarach who is our God. We, we end it with Alei to make sure that everyone understands that this is Kishbarach that we. I heard that. I don't know if that's true or not, but the interesting thing. That, that interesting, no, no. interesting theory. No, I, I know it's for a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, and that's the prayer we say three times a day, every single day of the year. Right. So he, he goes on here. He goes on here a whole paragraph of giving muster to all of us, and more to the rabbis of our generation for not having the courage to really uh, compose and to, cl- to declare and to add to our to our religious kind of customs and prayer and everywhere else some kind of meaning for 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 the shah. And obviously, the main the main issue is to have a day. I'm reading the Shua. Let, let's go on to Rathlevechik. Rathlevechik says very clearly, this is printed in the book of Kinot of, of Rabbi Slavechik. In Eretz Yisrael, this, this is, um, I'm not saying that he wrote this, by the way. He, this uh, J.J. Shachter, Rabbi J.J. Shachter put out the book. So I don't know whose words these are exactly. It's probably Slavechik or J.J. Shachter. I have to be careful. But this is what he thought. In Eretz Yisrael, they tried to establish a new fast, even though they were killed by the Nazis. They said there should be a separate date fast commemorate the death of Tikkun and Jews, I once told Ben Gurion that there'd be many occasions to establish the fast of the Crusades, but those in positions of authority chose not to. I pointed out to the formulation toward the end of the Kina, that we say about the Crusades, this is what Moshe was talking about. The author of this Kina says explicitly and unequivocally that we do not add days of mourning. Yes, there should be a fast course, but it should be Tisha B'Av. It should be done with Kinot, with Tehillim, but not an additional day for the same reason that they did not introduce separate fast day of mourning for the great scholars killed in Shapira and Magensa. Now, by the way, those who are interested um, to, to look this, uh, I, I recommend that you look in, in, in this book. I have next page a small paragraph but Rabbi Silvechik that's something very uh, brilliant. He takes the keynote that were written for the Crusades about Germany, and he explains them as if happened in the Holocaust. I mean, he takes the Holocaust events and he explains the kina that was written for the Crusades as if it's addressing the Shoah. Says, look, you, you look for example on the next page. When I read the lamentation of the destruction of the dead of the German communities in Shapira, Worms, and Magensa, I think of Warsaw, Vilna, and Kovna. There is no need to compose new poems and lamentations or prayer. Who would dare today to compose new prayers? Art Filat Amidah written by Ezra, and even the later poems written by great sages. I mean, this is a very uh, extreme opinion of a know, Who are we to write new Pinot, Piyutim, Tfilot, everything that was written in our Sidur was written by great people. And 
As it is, he says, we have lamentations that somehow attach, uh, connect himself to the Shoah. Um, if you go into the next paragraph, oh, by, by the way, I'll, I'll just tell you that um, before I continue this, um, there was a, there's a minhag that my family does. My grandfather did it. I would uh, actually be interested to hear if anyone else does it. We, in the night of Pesach in the Haggadah, at Shfoch HaMatcha, we say a special prayer for War Segedo uprising. Yes. Who, who does this in your house? Anyone else? Interesting. Um, I actually photocopied it. My Abba used to do it. My grandma used to do it. I photocopied it, put it in my, my, my Haggadah. And it's a special <coughs> some kind of tefillah that we remember tonight, that tonight, the night of Pesach, it was when the war Segedo began. And that uh, this was a day of this is and we remember the Shoah. We all sing Anima Amin, the national with the Shia. We do that in our family. The Slavichik wrote explicitly against this minhag, and he said, "You know, it's not the time and place to do this. Um, it's a it's a day of festival. We don't need the Shoah." It's interesting to me. I never asked my father this. My father was a Talmud. Uh, Phil, you know how my father was a student of Slavichik, right? How close, he, how close he was in many ways to Rasulavechik, and yet my father did it. You know, he was in our house. Um, I'll talk about this in a second, about, about sometimes about, you know, how things have their own dynamics, and we don't always follow. Sorry? Family custom also has court. Yes, uh, yeah, but again, like, uh, you, some, some people, if the Rebbe said something, they would never you know, they never think about it. Yes. We're interested to see that. If you could uh, send it, then that they're not sure, but maybe you can send it out in an email. I will try to I remember to photocopy it. I have it in my, in my good. Um, Chavonish. Yes. So far, is more concerned about the authority of the authors than of the tragedy of the people who suffer. I would have thought when you're speaking about tragedy, the size of the tragedy, the effect of the tragedy, the Second World War, all this the Shoah, and we're worrying about who wrote it. Yeah, yeah. If you judge a poem by the author or by the poem? Well, I, I, I think that there's a deep, my, my psychological reading into this is, is that Rabbi Slavishik was living in times where he felt he was, he was keeping up the dam against the reform. Uh, and I, I really think, I'll give you an example, you know, there's a, there's a, this is a little bit off topic, but, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a letter that a guy once um, that was printed, a response of a Slovakic to a student of his, a student of his was, was, was in Boston, told him that on Rosh Hashanah, he, the only shul that he can go to to hear a chauffeur is a shul without a mechitza. Now, I mean, if you just look at it from a very kind of, you know, calm and very mm -hmm. rational way, so with all due respect, you know, chauffeur is the right, huh? And I know, I know I'm being taped and quoted, but please don't take this out of... Um, <laughs> so, it's not mentioned in Shulchan Aruch. Mm -hmm. It's my knowledge mm -hmm. that you have to have a mechitz in the shul. I'm not coming. Don't get me wrong, I'm being taped. You have to have a mechitz in the shul. Don't worry. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, it, when you weigh it, right? Yeah. Just, just from a from a rational way, and Rav Slavishik said, better not to hear a chauffeur than to go to that shul, right? <laughs> but he probably was right at the time. Why? Because I mean, you know, some of you know better than I do that this was a this was a huge fight between the Orthodox and whoever was not in the Orthodox. And the feeling was that became the, the that became the front kind of symbol of orthodoxy. For right, and it doesn't make a difference right now if it's rational halacha daraiga the rabbana. It became a symbol, and I and I want to believe, and I, I actually do believe that this is a very similar idea of Slavich, that he was very nervous about change, about addition. You're going to add this, so you'll add this. Take off this, you'll take off that. I, uh, you know, a few, a, few, a few years ago, we had in Alon Shvut, where I live, we had a huge, huge uh, um, argument, very similar to what's going on in this country about the judicial system or not, um, 
whether or not women should be able to dance with Sifri Torah and Simchat Torah. You wouldn't believe what happened. It was crazy. And we had a town meeting. The only town meeting I remember ever having in 40 years. And one guy gets up and starts saying, this is a reform minimum. So Dafka, it was, it was uh, someone, uh, one of Rav Chassim's um, children who got up and said, reform? Like, look around you. There, there's no reform in Elon Shavuot. They're not threatening us anymore. That, that's like you saying, Karaites, the Karaites are coming, <laughs> right? I mean, there are no Karaites, Baruch Hashem, today that are threatening orthodoxy. There are no reform yeah. that are threatening. If anything, we are threatening ourselves or, 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 or whatever we have right now in front of us, let's deal with what we have in front of us, right? The reform today, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, Israeli kids growing up in Israel, um, from Israeli kids growing up in Israel, don't know anything about reform Judaism. But that's not threatening uh, our shuls. No one is like running from Orthodox shuls to go to reform shuls today. That's not what's going on today. Yes. Is there a parallel track of fear of the secular here in Israel? Um, there is, I think, a fear of secularism. I mean, of uh, take people that are scared to send the kids to the army because of that, right? Um, that's a real thing. I'm, I'm not, you know, the real thing that uh, that we're having a certain crisis in our communities today. Uh, the Orthodox communities are having a certain crisis. Um, I think that there are there are we, we we're 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 all part of it. We're all seeing it. I, I mean, I don't think it's the same model as what we said before, but there is. I said parallel. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I don't, ideology. I, I don't know if there. Is, I don't know if there's ideology that are threatening us um, per se. I mean, I mean, a real ideology. I think it's well. For instance, establishing Yom Hashoah as a political thing from a secular government is—is is, is there some analogy? No, I don't see that. I, I don't. That, I don't see that. Good question. I, I don't see that. Okay. Um, that that by reading. About Rav Slavichik, but I, I can't tell you the truth. I don't know. That's my feeling. Let's go to the Chazonish. The Chazonish also was very much opposed uh, making up a Yom Hashoah. In this in this letter of his, um, he writes the following: He goes on to now explain the structure of Torah. It's about the, our structure is we have the written Torah, then we have the oral Torah, the Af, Navi, and Rash. Even a Navi cannot establish Lechadesh, Ach, and Batsuba, Smach, Batoa. Even a Navi, Purim, they had a problem without having a hint in the Torah for Purim. They, could, they were not allowed to make a Purim. And therefore, he says in the next paragraph, We have to ask a great question. If we should have seven days of avilut al tsarot and orot shavu alim lo im chayavim ain't zerich askamot the imturim harei kfar muzarim inhod pustu the mitnesh the Torah petartan he says let's get to the third paragraph it's more important third paragraph ken kviat tanit dorot ubichlam mitzvah derabanan to make up a, a, a tanit for generations that's derabanan. How can we even think about it? That we are able to establish a halacha to make up a day, something that only Nevi'im could do, uh, barely Nevi'im could do, Chachmei Yisrael had to do, the Rabbanon, um, and our generation, who are so, you know, he belittles our generation right now. He says, who are we? We're, we're nothing. Who are we to think such a thing, et cetera, et cetera. And he really um, was opposed it from the, from, from the idea that we were not, again, he, he was also very nervous, very scared to make anything new, to establish anything new. What's fascinating is that in some Hasidic Sherebis, we find the opposite. That's more me. Slonim actually wrote for it. Um, and he actually quotes the minog that new keynote were written for the Crusades as, an, as, a, as, a, as a model that we should also uh, um, uh, imitate. And perhaps we should also write keynote for Yom HaShoah. Um, we add the ten, the 10 martyrs. We have a special keynote for them. Um, so, so there are some, there are some that, that, um, 
there, there, that, that, did, uh, that did talk about this. On uh, next page, I have a, a quote of a Herzog, who, um, who uh, this was written towards the end of the war. Um, and he said, we should wait for this decision to after the war. Um, he, he brought up some hesitations. He wasn't sure where this is going. But finally, there's a tshuva of the Kolme Vaser, which is fascinating because this, is, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it's a similar idea. Right after the war, there was a conference of rabbis and a suggestion was made to make a cheirim for Jews never to stop to, to step on the ground of Germany. And uh, he wrote, uh, he wrote uh, that, uh, guys, listen, the Torah said you're not allowed to return to Egypt. And we since then have to explain why the Rambam lived there and the Ravid lived and, and the, and, and the Radbad lived there, you know, and, and Jews traveled there to Egypt. So listen, let's not make up new things that we know that we're not gonna be able to protect, right? Don't make up new things. He was, he was also against making up decrees, new decrees for other reasons. But it's interesting that there were different attempts um, to try to make up new tefillot, new kinot, you made some new gzerot about the Shoah. But it seems that the rabbis were hesitant and were very opposed. And yet, and this is where I come, this is where my shir really begins. Why? And yet, de facto, Yom HaShoah is becoming more and more a real thing. It's a national day in Israel. There are laws of Things closing down early the night before. Um, there's a there's a certain feeling of a, of a of a real of a real day. Now now some some will say to me, oh that's a, that's a chiloni kind of thing, right? I uh, so, so here I here I want to uh, argue that um, the Jewish country, the Jewish state, is a is a Jewish country, Jewish state. And that we as a people, we as a nation in this country are de facto making a new day, adding to the Jewish calendar. And it's happening. And I believe, and this is what I wanna bring up today. I believe that this is a greater any ptak or written reason for not to do something it's because we, the Jewish people, are doing it. You know, we rabbis, in a funny way, rabbis have a very important place and role in guidance and in psak. But many times, it's what the people do is what makes things happen. You know, you know, Rav Moshe Fein, I know it's not the same thing at all. Rav Moshe Fein yeah, had a tshuva why peanut oil is kosher to Pesach. The OU today, you won't find Peanut oil, kosher pesach, is kicking off. They, they declare. You know the tshuva of Moshe again. There, we could go on about many tshuvot of many rabbis that said one thing, and and people didn't. I, I mean, Rosh Hashanah said you got to make bread for your ex when you drink coffee, when you drink, when you eat chocolate. Do you know that? I don't know anyone that does that. I, I, I'm not comparing the same level here, but I'm just trying to say that many times that there are different opinions <laughs> out there. But what happens at the end of the day is how we as a people decide things. And there are certain dynamics that occur. And I believe that they occur not by coincidence. They occur because of something real that the people that Am Yisrael realize that this is the right thing to do. Yes. Isn't that in the Gemara? That's right. Pukhav. Pukhav 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 Pukhav. Yes, look what the people are doing, right? It depends how you understand. Some people will say that that just means we don't know what the halacha is, so that will be um, some kind of indication. What I'm saying is more than that, right? I'm saying fuk davar means what the people are doing is the proof that that's the right thing. Very different, very different approach. Not everyone will agree with what I'm saying. I think uh, I, I, what I'm saying is not my idea. It's a very well known idea. I'm just I think that this is, and let me explain to you why I think that this is something so greater. This gentleman before mentioned that zikaron is a huge, huge piece in our religion, right? The mitzvah of Zechirat Yitzhak Mitzrayim every day, twice a day. Shesh Zechirat we have. Zechirat Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Zechirat Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Zechirat Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Yom Azikaron 
is, Yom, is Rosh Hashanah. By the way, Yom HaZikaron in, in the Torah is also Pesach. Her refers to Yom HaZikaron as Pesach. We, we sometimes don't notice that. Zikrat HaMalei. That there, there are uh, the, 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 the verb Nitzkor is a big piece of our Judaism. Yes. World War II to Amalek. I mean, I, I think that's a, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's Rosh Hashanah's famous idea, the the Rav the, that talks about that uh, Amalek is, a, is an idea rather than right. than people. Yes, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you that there's a basis for that too. Correct. I agree with you 100 percent as part of it. But I think there's more than that, and, and, th and this is where I'll explain my, my idea for today, which this is what I want to say. Let's go back a second to all Jewish holidays. Let's understand what are Jewish holidays. And when I, I mean holidays, I don't mean just days of Chagim, of celebration, but even days of Taniyot. And right, what are, what are they all about? I'll, I'll give you a few examples. Some Gidalia. Why do we fast on Gedalia? Right? If someone thinks that we fast because of Gedalia, he was the greatest. There's only one person in Jewish history that we fast for. Not Moshe Rabbeinu, not the Rambam, not Rabbi Akiva, not David HaMelech, right? What? Not Rabbi not Yitzhak, not Yaakov, not Yosef. There's one person. Gedalia, I mean, they're mad. Oh, meaning, right? Because, so, because they're, they're, what happened that day is symbolic, is meaningful, not just for them, but for all generations. But let's ask more than that. What, what actually happened in most Jewish holidays? My claim is nothing. Nothing happened on those days. I'll explain. What happened in Rosh Hashanah, historically? I don't know what. If I... We, if, we get, if, we get, if we take if we take a Tanakh here, we take a Tanakh, a Chumash, and I ask you why do we celebrate Rosh Hashanah? Don't waste your time. You won't find any historical reason for why we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur. Why do we celebrate Yom Kippur? Don't waste your time. There's no reason given in the Chumash. Yeah. What happened? What happened then? No, no, it's a day that Aaron should go into Kodesh Kodesh. Historically, nothing happened according to Chumash. What happened on Sukkot? Nothing. Okay, we have an exceptional Chag. It's called Pesach. Pesach, something happened. What's our next Chag? Shavuot. What happened on Shavuot? Trick question, be careful. What happened on Shavuot? Uh, Excellent. 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 Nothing happened on Shavuot. The Torah doesn't tell us what happened on Shavuot. Because of the No, not according to this book. You can take this chumash and find where it says, and don't waste your time because it doesn't. Right? It doesn't say in the chumash that the Torah was given on Shavuot. What, what did Lutashem? Where does it say that? Show me. It says in period in Shmot. That what? That what happened? That on Sivan something happened? No, 50 days after Pesach. What does it say that 50 days after Pesach something happened? It says make that day, Shavuot, that's all it says. On the fifth day, on the 50th day from Pesach, do a chag. That's what it says. Historically, there's no reason. And yet, Chazal come along. I'm sorry if I just threw all your childhood. <laughs> but then Chazal came along and Chazal said, let's fill the gap. Rosh Hashanah, the world was created. On Yom Kippur, Moshe Rabbeinu came down with Luchot, and Hashem forgave the Jewish people. It became a day of forgiveness. That's Yom Kippur. On Shavuot, Sukkot, really nothing happened, sorry. And, and Shavuot, the Torah was given. So the, the Chachamim are filling in the, the gap, the historical reason for Chagim, which the Torah is obviously trying to hide from us. And the reason is probably is because the Torah is trying to teach us that Jewish holidays are not just days of commemorating the past, but rather reliving these events in our generation, what they mean to us now. The Matan Torah is not about, if the Torah was said, celebrate the Torah was given. So let's go, remember, oh, yeah, it was given. No, you're now receiving the Torah. 
tonight. On Sukkot, you're sitting in the Sukkah. You're reliving, you're reliving the experiences of what those Chagim, every Jew must go through historical events in his and her generation, in his time. In your time, you must relive these events. These are important events that you, that affect who you are and what you do in life. You must sit in the Sukkah, you must eat the Matzah, you must receive the Torah, you must ask God for forgiveness, you must make Hashem Melech Allah Olam. And the same goes with Ta'aniyot. Call, right, we say uh, the Chobam is Amidash is happening now. The Bet Mesh is burning now. You must feel, you must have an emotional attachment to what is going on, what the meaning of the Chobam bite is for you, which means that there's a very important yesod in how we um, celebrate Chagim and Mo'adim and Taniyot. It's that we don't just commemorate the event that happened, but somehow we relive these events in our time. Why am I saying? And that's one thing I'm saying. Second thing I'm saying is, notice the Jewish holidays always come in clusters. Mm. We have Aserti Mei Tshuva. We have Pesach and Shavuot with Sfrat Omer. And we have these three weeks. Why? Why do we have these kind of clusters of Chagim? Because again, the, the, it's about a process. It's about moving forward. It's about reliving and moving with these events, right? From Rosh Hashanah, Aserti Mei Tshuva, to Yom Kippur, and finally to Sukkot. Sfirat Omer about Yitziyah Lechirut, Fizit, physical freedom, and then to Shavuot, to the virtual. In the three weeks, it's about slowly, slowly adapting to the idea of the Chorban, adding more, the three weeks, the nine days, the Shavuot Shechal, the Tisha Be'ab. These are the two principles, I think, of all Jewish holidays. Now, in our days, I think Am Yisrael, from the subconscious of the Jewish people, are taking these principles and creating new days based upon them. Why do I say that? Because I'll talk hopefully next week about the making of Yom HaZikron and Yom HaTzmot. But one of the, as years go by, we can hear more and more people questioning Yom Atzmaut. Well, what are we celebrating? What is it to celebrate? Really, bad man. You know, uh, oh, look what's going. Look, so many bad things are happening. So many this, this. There's a reason why Yom Hashoah, without being planned, without being thought of, the Jewish people somehow realize that we have to make it the week before Yom Atzmaut. You want to celebrate your Matzmot? You want to appreciate your Matzmot? As time goes by, you will question that. So you first have to commemorate Yom HaShoah. Rav Mital, in one of his Sichot, I just read this this week, Rav Mital, who was a Holocaust survivor himself, after, after Yamit, 1982, after Sinai, uh, we made peace with Egypt and we uprooted all the Shuvim down south. And it was a very difficult Yom Smot for many Jews. Mm. Similar to Gush Katif, I'm not going to all the... And Rav Mital said, listen, I said Halil on Yom Smot in 1948, where the flames of Gush Etzion were still burning. Over 120 men and women were massacred in Gush Etzion. And we said Halil. Because I, were, I was just three years earlier in the camps. And I'm telling you that if you look at what's happening right now, 1948, this is the greatest time in Jewish history. And I'm telling you, if I say hello then, I'm for sure going to say hello now. You need the proportion and the perspective of the Shoah. You need to remember it by itself. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You need to remember it for itself. But the, the idea that the Jewish people, without planning, without planning it, they, they established it a week before Yom HaTzma'ut gives, I think, an historical perspective. And that we go through, just like the three weeks we go through it, we are going through the Yom HaShoah, Yom HaZikaron, that leads us to Yom HaTzma'ut. I'll give you an example, which I think is so simple. Um, and with that, I'll finish for today. The day before Purim is tiny to stare. Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. On so many levels. Level one, 
When did Esther actually fast? Pesach. So why are we fasting the day before? That's question number one. Question number two, it worked. The time it worked. So we're, we're, this is such, it's like a, it's an irony about Jews, right? We fasted. God said, okay, it worked. Right? Right? It's like, it's like what would happen tomorrow if, uh, if tomorrow they, the government would get up and say, no more change in the juridical system. We accept all, right? All what you said, right? And then we'll say Shabbat, another half gonna. Why? Because last week we did one. Right? Another another demonstration, I'll say. We, 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 you did it, you won. No? We continue, right? Tanit Esther makes no sense. Purim happened. <laughs> Isn't that why we celebrate Purim? Because Purim happened? So why are we stepping? It's also three days. Okay, so thank God it's not three days, right? <laughs> why do we fast and why do we fast then? So Rav Salvation has a beautiful piece about this in 14 Shonim that basically say, Purim doesn't begin on your doubt. Or I'm sorry for you guys, Tetva, oh, sorry. Purim starts on time to stir. Because if we do not commemorate the fasting, the tragedy that was about to befall, if we can't realize what was about to happen and where the Jews were at the point and what they went through, we have to relive that also. We have to relive that 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 pachad, that 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 threat. And if we do that, then we can really celebrate Purim. You can't understand the greatness of Purim if you don't understand what might have happened, what could have happened. What we're going through before Purim to, to, to think we are about to be all destroyed, to be killed. You have to relive that. And then we celebrate Purim. And I think this is the same exact idea what brought this country and this people, our people, to realize that if we want to, for the future more than, than today, if we want to have people in a hundred years from now celebrating Yom HaTzma'ut, then Yom HaShua cannot be just in another day. It has to be the week before Yom HaTzma'ut so people can understand the greatest miracle of our generation is Yom HaTzma'ut. <clears throat> You have to go through Yom HaShoah. And as I said, Yom HaShoah was never planned to be the week before Yom HaTzma'ut. It was an argument, as I said, we, we just showed it was an argument. The rabbis didn't like it for many reasons. The government decided to put it what it did because they wanted to make, to commemorate the, 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 the Warsaw Ghetto. But of course, they couldn't do that when it was supposed to be just Pesach. The, the government can't make a Pesach Yom HaShoah. So what do they do? They pushed it off. They didn't say, oh, we have this great idea. Let's make Yom HaShoah right before Yom HaTzmoh. They didn't say that. That wasn't the plan. They said, let's make it around Pesach. So we'll do that after Pesach. It happened to be, right? Happened to be the week before Yom HaTzmoh. And I think that um, that's why I believe that all the reasons that maybe the rabbis gave for not doing it may be, may be good ideas and good reasons. But at the end of the day, as time goes by, we are seeing that Yom HaZikron HaShu'av HaGavura is becoming part of our new Jewish calendar. And um, it's, it's the facts on the ground that are going to decide whether or not it be part of it or not. And no decision by this person or that person is going to change that. It's how Am Yisrael are going to react to this and commemorate this. And, and that's what we're seeing right now. Hopefully next week, we will talk about the history of Yom HaZikron Yom Hash and Yom Ha'atzma'ut, and the making of these days also a part of the new Jewish holiday that added to the Jewish calendar. Um, I have I have now five minutes for questions. If anybody if anybody wants to ask questions, I'm yes, yeah, question. yeah, question or question. comments. I think I, I think what you're saying basically follows a a a, a, a halachic type of rule, but in a different slice of fashion. There's a standard rule that says not geyser any gezeira that rovam can enim yisrael. The same way you could say that you must be going there, something that the people could not do without. Right. And again, the, me the deep meaning of that is, is that Am Yisrael decides how customs are done. No, no, no one, I don't care how great he is, can make a decision if people are not going to abide by it. Right. 
Um, it, it's uh, and that's the belief that that's the belief that Tarash Baal Peh, by the way, really means Tarash Baal Peh is is what we do, what is, what we keep as as a people gives the authority to Tarash Baal Peh. That's what makes Tarash Baal Peh Tarash Baal Peh. The fact that Am Yisrael keep something and do something gives the authority to Tarash Baal Peh to be Tarash Baal Peh because Tarash Baal Peh al Tarash Bichtav, right? That's the famous Lova Shemayim. That's the famous idea of Lova Shemayim. It's developed from the people. Right, that's what he just said. Okay. Yeah. So I find it very interesting that the Hasidic approach is because also the keynote for the Shoah, the right? Hasidic the, Hasidic Rebbe. the Hasidic Rebbe. Um, and uh, because the Hasidic approach seems to have their pulse on the people more so. But, but and it relates. I, I heard this over Pesach. What I think is it's an amazing drush as you continue it that the Svatemet, obviously, you know, the line of Chatzidim says this. There's a mind from him that says that Keneged Kloshai Rogalim Minatora, right? It, uh, there are three Regalim right. that are Durabanan. So he says Shavuos is obviously related to Purim, Kimu Vikiblu. Sukkot is obviously related to Hanukkah, many similarities. What about Pesach? Atid Lavo. That will be established in the future. Right. So obviously the Hasidic approach is, yes, you know, this Some third maybe. regal, right. the Rabbanan, it's not, we don't know what it is yet. Or, or, or we do. Or we do. Today we do, because again, there's a whole thing with the iron, with the, with the letters yes, and the yes, alphabet. Yes. Adu Rosh. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Which is in the Shulchan Right, right. Which is in the Shulchan Right, right, right. So the Hasidic approaches seems to be very interesting. Right, right. Someone had had it. Yes, please. In terms of uh, following sort of like the will of the people, if you will, um, in this case, isn't the role of the people the non-religious? Uh, that you that that be following? Right. And if you look within the religious, it's not uniform there. The Haredim are not necessarily the Haredim, okay. viewing it the same way that you describe it. That's a, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. Um, that's a very, I, I've thought about that question quite a lot, quite, quite often. Uh, uh, that, that you know what what is how do you really uh, how do you really count what Amitra is doing if if, if, if it's the chibonim the datiim the charedim what's what's done um, so I agree with you that, that in order to accept what I'm saying today you have to recognize that the medina has a value I, I agree with you meaning if you if you come on and say listen the the medina the medina has no religious significance in my life, then then, you, then your question is a valid question. I think that if you take into a, if, if you see this idea called Midnat Yisrael and what we're establishing here, that it has some biblical value, some religious value, then I think what I said can, can go. Uh, but if, if you say, listen, it's only, you know, um, there's no place in my religious world for a Medina, then, then, then you're right, but, that, but that, that I, I personally don't agree with that, and that's I agree that I should maybe say that. But that's that's where that's based upon. Um, you have to take that into account. Um, I, I I think that in the um, so the, I, I, there's a lot more talk about this. Yes, I, I I agree. It's it's a good question though. It's a good question. The Seder. I think we'll stop here and we'll continue this next week. Yeah. Um, mentioned in the short whatever. It, it, it's only mentioned and uh, barely mentioned. She's over here. There's nothing to it. You mentioned your hobby. I purchased it oh, the other day. <laughs> Would you mind thank signing you. it for no, me? Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry about my, my question about the feeling. It actually was related to what he just said just now. I'm Israel is it's a larger. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, the, uh, 